Good morning. Good morning. Good, happy happy Monday. Happy Monday. A um, little bit of a grey day. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I hope you had a really, really lovely weekend, as, or as much as you could do. Did you uh, Did you enjoy the weather? Did you enjoy the weather this weekend? It was something else, wasn't it? Um, boy, did it rain. Boy, did it rain on Saturday. Um, the house, I, I was actually out in the rain, and I, I was waiting to be picked up. And the rain, the rain, the hailstones were so big that it was actually stinging my head. It was, it was horrendous. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Is that what Luton's like? Am I, I don't, I don't recall ever having hailstones like that before. Is that what Luton's like? Every time it rains, am I going to have to wear a tin hat or something? One of those things that knights wear. Um, but joking aside, I actually. I actually like the, I actually quite like the rain. Um, I, I don't know whether it's the gothic romantic in me, but actually I don't mind the rain at all. Uh, and the Bible likes the rain. Or oh, certainly the Bible has a lot to say about rain. It has a lot to say, um, both physically um, and of course spiritually. The Bible has an awful lot to say about the rain. Now, if we think about it historically, the Holy Land um, rain was considered to be a great blessing between the spring rains which ended uh, uh, in April and the autumn rains that began again in October in the Holy Lands uh, six months will go by with almost exclusively clear skies there's no rain at all it's just the way it's made and then when the rain eventually comes back um, it's considered to be a massive blessing it's considered to be a huge blessing and directly from God's hands and when it rains people begin to pray and they begin to thank God um, and that's a that's a fantastic thing and of course when you think about it actually it is all a matter of perspective it's all a matter of perspective when it rains in England especially in the summer it's seen to be a bad thing now it might be my Welsh heritage where rain in the summer is more uh, is more par for the course um, but in the summer in England definitely rain is seen to be a very very bad thing and I think it's probably because water always seems to be so readily available we very rarely have drought so much that actually we need standpipes on the street. I know it's happened occasionally, um, but really water is very ve uh, readily available. So when it rains, we think, oh dear. But these are days that other people would actually love to have. Um, it's easy, it's easy for us to forget. It's forget to be thankful and to forget about our blessings. Um, and we do this all the time. I think we do. I, I certainly do. Um, we complain about things that are good gifts simply because we have so much and we don't see things in context. We see things through the, the lens. I see things through the lens of my own world. Um, and we do have so much to be thankful for. Um, I got I got wet on Saturday. Um, and although I like the rain and I appreciate the rain and I understand the great gift of water, I got soaked. And so I moaned and moaned and moaned. And yet how much would I moan if we didn't have any rain for six months? Um, when I was at school, I remember I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of school um, a lot of the time. And I moaned and I moaned and I moaned. But I got educated. And actually, I moaned about something that so many children throughout the world would absolutely feel blessed for. I often see videos that are sent to me um, about kids in, in, in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, in South America. You know, they want to be doctors because they want to give back to their village and they can't get educated. And there are me. And I was moaned about school and I moaned about college and I moaned about university um, and so these things put it into perspective and so it, rain is a great or maybe I'll talk about rain the rest of the week actually but rain uh, as we're going to have rain for the rest of the week by all accounts so uh, uh, I'll be right on theme uh, right on trend and um, but actually sometimes the blessings that are right under our nose are things um, that we moan about um, so I think we need to seek blessings in all situations. We need to seek the blessings in all situations. For who knows? And who knows what God might have in place? For the things that we moan about, who knows what God is doing, how God is working. Um, for those who are willing to just take a step back 
and appreciate what's right under our nose. Let's begin in prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, and according to your judgment, give us life. For the night has passed, and the day, and this brand new week lie open before us. And so, let us pray with one heart and with one mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this amazing new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so our, so our reading today. Uh, Psalm number two, Psalm two. Why are the nations in tumult? And why do the people devise a vain plot? The king of the earth rise up and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He who dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in wrath and testify them in his fury. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, he said to me. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations of your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be prudent, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and with trembling. Kiss his feet, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all they, they who take refuge in him. And our Gospel reading this morning is Luke, beginning at chapter 10. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself, he said to him. You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest who was going down the road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he also passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Let's spend some time in prayer. And so, Heavenly Father, we come to you today at the beginning of this new week. And Lord, we come before you because we know that you hear us, that you would help us and you would guide us. Heavenly Father, we place 
our hopes and dreams, our joys and our sorrows at the foot of the cross. And so, Father God, we bring before you those people still suffering at the hands of the coronavirus. Lord, we place before you the many, many people who have passed away. And Lord, we ask them, we ask you, Lord, that you take each one of them into your kingdom. Father, be with all those who grieve, all the family and friends. Lord, wrap them up in your compassionate embrace. Lord, bring comfort to them in their sadness. And Lord, bring assurance to their hearts and minds that these people are now with you. We pray too, Lord, for those who are still ill, for those in hospitals, those at home who are self-isolating but have the, have the virus, Lord. Lord, the numbers go down, but there's still many, many people. And so, Lord, we pray for their healing. Father, we pray for all those people who are worried about loved ones at the moment, for those people who worry that family have the illness, Lord, and for those family that are still concerned about older and more vulnerable relatives and friends that are that are still in isolation still over a million people lord and so again we pray your peace and your comfort and your compassion and your healing and your love into all these situations in a moment of silence bring before god anybody known personally to yourself Father God, we pray for so many people currently working, Lord, currently being a, a shoulder for us all to lean upon. Lord, for the NHS, nurses, doctors, hospital workers, care workers, Lord, for people working in hospices, doctor's surgeries, ambulance drivers, paramedics, air ambulance, for the police, for armed forces, the fire service, and Lord, for so many people working in roles that just make our lives a little bit more bearable people working in shops and transport, manufacturing, Lord, for people who have gone back to work in the last couple of weeks, for children going back to school, people working hard to try and rebuild our economy, make things as easy as it is for us to move forward, people working behind the scenes, Lord, that we don't even think about, people keeping our water flowing, our electricity working, our gas still coming through, Lord, let us never forget how bad this would have been if people hadn't done these things. So we all know somebody that's worked really, really hard. And Lord, we just offer them up to you now in a moment of silence.
Father God, the world keeps turning. And so, Lord, we pray for situations throughout the world. Father, people are still ill beyond the coronavirus. People are still hungry in the world. People are hungry in our own country, Lord. People have nowhere to call home. Father, people are lonely. People are very, very poor, Lord. People suffer. And so, Lord, we just pray into a, a world that so badly needs you, Lord. Coronavirus has put a world of problems into, into lockdown, but the problems are still very much part of people's world. And so, Lord, we just ask for wisdom in our leaders. Lord, we pray for all the charities that are trying so, so hard at the moment, Lord, so desperately hard to replenish their finances and volunteer base, Lord. And so, Lord, we just ask that charity throughout the world, dealing with so many problems, are just blessed. That in our own, in our own isolation, in our own problems, Lord, we don't forget about other people's problems. Lord, more than ever, we ask that you turn our hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. In a moment of silence, bring before God a situation or a charity that's close to your heart. Father God, we thank you for this world. Lord, we thank you for the things that make us smile. Lord, we thank you for fun, for love and laughter. Lord, we thank you for our friends and our companions. Lord, we thank you for our churches, our homes. Lord, for the sun when it shines and the rain when it falls. And the blessing you are to each one of us. And so finally, in a moment of silence, just offer up to God something that you're really thankful for today. The beginning of this new week. almighty and everlasting God we thank you that you brought us safely to the beginning of this new day keep us from falling into sin or running into danger order us in all our doings and guide us to do only what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen and trusting in the promises of God as our Saviour taught us so we pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. fantastic well have a brilliant week actually as, as i look out of the window now the sun is shining so there you go god is god is blessing us albeit momentarily so uh looking at the weather forecast i would say if you're going to go out for a walk i would probably go sooner rather than later um morning prayer tomorrow uh, because i'm at the hospice would be at eight o'clock 
Um, nine o'clock on Wednesday, eight o'clock again on Thursday, nine o'clock on Friday. Evening prayer this week, um, 8.30 um, on Thursday evening. Again, if you'd like prayers um, for that or prayers for Sunday, do get them over to us. I'm aiming to get out another um, letter this week um, just to let you know what's uh, what's going on. Is little glimmers of news, um, nothing nothing solid. There was something on the BBC uh, yesterday about churches opening up shortly, uh, but for private prayer. Um, and so we'll work out a system of being able to do that once we're, I've got the full details. But I will let you know as soon as I've got them. That's exciting. That's a, that's a glimpse of glimpse of hope a glimmer of hope i don't know which, whichever way we want to put it but that would be that would be good it's a it's a start um if you need me i'm around much of the week as i say i'm in um, i'm in the hospice a couple of days but uh, but i am here phone me message me text me and um as i say we'll, we'll hopefully get some uh I'll hopefully get an update out to you shortly and so let's finish with a with a final blessing blessing for monday and so may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through this storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a fantastic day, folks.